segment that we've got here, we are going to be looking at proportion and rate. In our last section, we looked at ratio and ratio, proportion, rate normally go together. Now, I've got to stress that when you look at your exam, this section on proportion and rate won't be a section by itself, but rather it would be, uh, we'd be testing proportion and rate, or you'll be using proportion and rate to answer certain questions, which could come up in your finance question, or it could even come up with your map work. Okay, so when you're working out speed, for example, then we're going to start looking at rates. Right, so let's start from the very beginning. What is proportion or what are proportions? A proportion is an equation with a ratio on each side. It is a statement that two ratios are equal. Okay, an example of a proportion is this. 1 over 20 is the same as 5 over 100. Okay, let's have a look at that. Does that make sense? Well, in doing this, we're going to say, what did I have to multiply the top number by to get an answer? And when I said 1 times 5, I got 5. And when I do the same at the bottom, I say times 5, 20 times 5 gives me 100. Okay, so proportion, again, it's an equation with two ratios on equal side. Let's try our best to apply these. So here's one. Sipu is making up bunches of flowers to sell at a flower shop. He's instructed to use three times as many daisies as roses in each bunch. He has 15 daisies. In one of the bunches. How many flowers will there be in the bunch? Okay, so we are going to say, cool, we've got daisies and we got roses. Okay, so I'm going to say daisies and roses. And that oh, has got to be the same as daisies and roses on that side. Now, please take note, we're told he's to use a, three times as many daisies. So, if he has one rose, oops, we've gone right off the page. If he has one rose, he's got to have three daisies. Okay, can you see how I've written it? So, here, this ratio, I'm writing as a fraction, not as three is to one but rather 3 over 1. Remember we said ratios can be written in three ways. Do you remember that? Let's just recap quickly. It could be written 3 to 1, or 3 to 1, or 3 over 1. Now because we're dealing with proportion, I'm going to use the fraction method of writing these um, ratios. So daisies to roses, for every one rose, I've got to have three daisies. Now the question says this, he has 15 daisies in one bunch. So here now he's got 15 daisies. So we've now got to work out, well, how many roses does he have then? So let's get a bit of um, exciting maths going here. Three times what gives me 15? Well, three times five. So he's using... 3 times 5, 15 daisies. What we did to the top, we do to the bottom as well. So we're going to multiply the bottom by 5. What's 1 times 5? 1 times 5 is 5. So he uses 15 daisies. He's going to have to use 5 roses. Let's just check. 5 times 3 is 15. So definitely 1 rose, 3 daisies. 5 roses, 15 daisies. Cool. Now, folk, it's very simple or very easy to leave our answer as that and say, therefore, he's got to have five roses. But what was the question? Okay. Now, I want to just pause here for a minute and say this. Folk, throughout your mathematical exam, please always, always, always ask yourself, have I answered the question? 
Now that may sound like a stupid question for me to tell you to ask yourself, but so many times students in their final exam will read a question, okay, then they think, ah, oh, yeah, I know this. They do their answer and they stop. And they don't read what the question actually was asking. So let's look at this question. What was it? It didn't ask us how many roses. It says, how many flowers will there be in the bunch all together? So, how many daisies did I had? I had 15 daisies. How many roses? I had five roses. So how many flowers all together? There are 20 flowers in the bunch. Jeez, I wonder how many of you would have said, cool, five roses, done the question, rule off, let's go to the next question. And then the poor marker would come along and say, oh no, they know what they're doing, but they just haven't read the question. So read your question. Let's have a look at another problem. A summer camp has a boy to girl ratio of 8 is to 3. If the camp has 88 boys, what is the total number of children on the camp? Now just the other day I went on a camp, okay, and uh, we had two groups. We, in fact we had three groups. We had two girl groups and one boy group. And uh, the one girls group had 10 people and the one boys group had 20 people. When they had to dish out the food, how do you think they gave the food? Okay. Did they give the same amount of food to the groups, both groups? No. They would have been unfair. Imagine if they'd come along and said, right, we are giving 10 two-minute noodle packs okay, to the girls' group. And we're going to give the same amount to the boys' group. Well, that would have been unfair. Because it means the girls group would have each had a whole pack to themselves. The boys group would have had to share a pack. So there would have been one pack for every two boys. So the ratio wouldn't have been quite the same. Now we've got a similar question here. Where we say we are also dealing with a camp. But we've got boys and we've got girls. And I'm going to write it as... A fraction. Why? Because I know I'm dealing with proportions here. And remember proportion, I've got a ratio with equals a ratio. And so I'm going to deal with it as a fraction. So how many boy to girl? I've got eight boys and 11 girls. All right? That's the ratio. But on this particular camp, I've got 88 boys. So my boys are 88. How many girls do I now have on the camp? Again, guys, there are two ways of doing this. We could say, right, so I'm going to say 8 times what gives me 88, and it's going to be 11. And then I multiply the bottom line by 11, and I'm going to get 121. So I've got 121 girls. There's another way to do it, of course, and that's by cross-multiplication. So, let's say I do this. I'm going to say, right, I've got 8 over 11 equals 88 over the number of girls. Now, I can do this by cross-multiplication. I can say, let's multiply that. So, I've got 88 times 11 and girls times 8. So girls times 8. Okay. Then I say, hey, you know what? I'm trying to find the girls by themselves. So girls is equal to 88 times 11 divided by 8. Why divide by 8? Because to get girls by itself, I divide that side by 8. So I've got to do the same on the other side. And then my calculator is going to do the work for me. So I'm going to say, cool, we've got 88 multiplied by 11 over 8 equals, and my answer, 121. Can you see the two different methods? Personally, I like this method. Okay. But if we land up with very, very big numbers, and you can't figure out what you've got to multiply by, then maybe this method would suit you better. Okay. 
two different methods. And that's what I love about mathematical literacy, is that there are different ways of finding the same answer. As long as you show the examiner the method you are using. Don't just write down answers, folk. Show how you're getting to your answer. And if you get to the correct answer, irrespective of what method I've used, I should get full marks. Okay, but what was the question? The question wasn't how many girls. The question was, let's go, what is the total number of children on the camp? So, let's have a look at that. We know we got 88 boys. We know we got 121 girls. So, how many have we got in total? 121 plus my 88 gives me 209. So, I have 209 students on my camp. Now, rate. What is a rate? A rate like a ratio, also compares two numbers or measurements. But the two numbers in a rate have different units. Folk, what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look. 16 rand 95 per kilogram. So I'm comparing money to mass. 16 rand 95 per kilogram. Where do I see that? I see that quite a lot when I go into a shop, don't I? I go and buy a piece of meat and it says this meat costs 16 rand 95 per kilogram. Well, it actually doesn't know meat's that cheap, okay? It's probably going to be 109 rand per kilogram. But can you see the comparisons now? We're still comparing that amount for this amount, but it's rands to kilograms. My units are different. In the same way, when I'm doing speed, let's have a look at that. 120 kilometers per hour, okay? So, I'm comparing kilometers to time. In other words, if I travel 120 kilometers per hour, what it's actually saying, if I keep that speed up, after one hour, I've covered 120 kilometers, okay? Again, I'm comparing two numbers, 120 to 1, but it's different units. 120 kilometers to your time, hours. Okay. Now let's see how we can write this. 1695 uh, per kilogram can be written per, a little forward slash. Okay. That means per. 120 kilometers per hour or 120 kilometers slash hour per hour. Okay. So in summary then, in this short little segment we've covered the following. We've looked at proportion and remember we said proportion are two um, ratios with an equal sign in between and those ratios are written as fractions. We've looked at rate, okay, kilometers per hour, kilograms, okay, uh, or so many rands per kilogram. And then we've looked at various applications. We've done one or two sums. I really hope this has helped you this segment. And remember what I said, when you get to your exam, there won't be a section just on a ratio, proportion, or rate. It all gets intertwined together with your other sections, like finance, like map work, like measurement, like statistics. Okay, chat soon, enjoy the break. Thank you.